Hello, everyone, and God bless. This is Father Mikhail, Father Michael, with another episode of Living Orthodox. And today I am going to be talking about meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Now, before I do, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content and to hit the bell notification. Also, check out the link in the description below. You will find links to books that I base my talks off of. Um, you will find uh, the link to my Patreon and to my Discord. Uh, the Patreon uh, membership, of course, helps me a lot in terms of being able to do more videos, improve the quality of the videos, uh, acquire research material for my videos. And, uh, and of course, uh, we have now on Patreon for pa Patreon members, the Art of Salvation Book Club. And so it is a book club for members of uh, the Living Orthodox Patreon. And uh, we will be meeting at least a couple times a month, God willing, unless there's feast days or other things barring, uh, such as my, my duties as a, as a parish rector. There, there are sometimes things that call my attention away, such as visitations to the sick, you name it. Um, but of course, I will do my utmost to give a good warning if, if there's a necessary cancellation. Uh, that being said, we actually had our first book club meeting this past Thursday, and I would say it was a success. It was a beautiful time, and uh, we really enjoyed ourselves and I felt that we were able to benefit a lot from reflecting on the first homily by Elder Ephraim in there which I will also be producing uh, uh, putting out another um, video on. You might also notice some some changes uh, soon on the channel. Uh, I am going to be working with uh, with a wonderful young Orthodox man who has offered to help edit the videos in order to kind of improve the quality and also improve the production output. So uh, God bless him and thank you to him for this, uh, for this act of, of service. So today, I'm going to talk about the meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And this is something I've toyed with. If, As I've mentioned in other things, we Orthodox Christians kind of take the approach of being like the bee. You know, we take the best parts of the flower and we make use of them to make sweet nectar. And we've seen in the Orthodox Church that we have the tendency to take things from different cultures or different groups of people and purify them in the light of Christ. Um, for example, Unseen Warfare by St. Theophon the Recluse and edited by St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain was actually originally written by a Roman Catholic priest by the name of uh, Lorenzo. And so it had a lot of good things to work with, but of course there would have been errors. There would have been some things that needed to be orthodoxized, if you will. And so St. Theophon and St. Nicodemus didn't just go, oh, well, this was written by a Catholic, so it's garbage. They took the best parts of the book flushed them out and, and added to them in a way that would work in an orthodox context. And we can do this with other things too. And I would dare say even with something like Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So if this is a project you would like to see me do more of, uh, just please let me know. I'm also currently researching uh, the Western Rite to do a video or maybe a couple of videos on that topic. But it'll be a little while before I put that one out because I really want to make sure I understand everything surrounding this and all the variations behind it before I speak about it. I don't like to speak without uh, giving things their fair appraisal. So I think, uh, I think it's something that could maybe be beneficial for us to take a look at and to examine and, and, uh, and see for ourselves, right? But now getting to the topic of the video, uh, I am basing this largely off of just a single passage out of book four uh, by Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, which were really just his journals um, uh, while he was serving as Emperor of Rome. And there's a lot of things, of course, that revolve around his life and a lot of you know, controversies or complexities. But these words have helped many people throughout history, and including myself, especially when I was younger, before I was Orthodox, I found the, the words of Marcus Aurelius to be a great source of comfort and guidance when I was kind of feeling listless and lost as a young man in the world. Um, and today I want to really focus on the virtue of patience, because this is something we lack. And, and in all reality, patience is just a, an offshoot from the virtue of temperance or self-control. You know, a lot of people will say, Father, uh, my patience was tested, or I, I grew impatient. And I always tell them this is a good thing. Um, patience is, is like a muscle. It needs to be tested. It needs to be strained and stretched and tried and pressed in order to grow stronger and more tolerant in the future for greater hardships. And Marcus Aurelius, naturally being a emperor of the most powerful nation on earth at the time, 
uh, had a lot of pressure and a lot that would test his patience. And so in book four, uh, and on page, I believe it is page 48 of the Gregory Hayes Modern Library translation, uh, he says it is to be like the rock. He just opens up saying to be like the rock or in, in, in some translations like the rocky headland that the waves keep crashing around or over, right? It stands unmoved and the raging sea uh, falls still around it. And this is a great understanding of patience, of temperance, and the ability to weather the storm, quite literally. What he's telling himself is to be like the rock, that the waves will crash over, and that the raging sea settles around. And a lot of the time, we, we can even be reminded of the words of St. Seraphim of Seraph, acquire the spirit of peace and thousands around you will be saved. The most effective form of outreach, of evangelism, ultimately starts with us and we get battered and buffeted by the waves of the world but if we have the spirit of peace we can be like a rock right and, and of course there's other imagery from from the scriptures that we will attach this to but by acquiring the spirit of peace others around us tend to be settled others will calm and the sea will seem to settle if we maintain our peace now that being said it's okay for us to have moments of weaknesses it's okay to cry it's, it's okay to make mistakes. And what is not okay is to affirm those mistakes and to keep making them. We need to learn from them. And obviously, this is something Marcus is reminding himself of from his Stoic teachings that he received. Um, this also, for me, brings to mind the parable of rock and sand. Now, obviously, we know in the parable of the man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house upon the rock, that ultimately the rock is referring to Christ. It's referring to the faith in Christ. It's referring to the church established on Christ because Christ is constant. He never changes. You know, God is the same yesterday as he is today and will be forevermore, right? So it, it's, it's understanding this, but what are we called to in the church? To be Christians, we are called to be little Christ. We're called to imitate Christ, to be icons of Christ. And so in some regards, it's as we, we read in, in the epistles of St. Peter, that we are living stones for the building up of the church. And that is because each of us has to be solid and completely centered in Christ so that like him, like Christ who is the rock, like him, we need to be like stones. We need to be not only part of the foundation, part of the church. You know, we have to be here for the building up of it. We also have to be sturdy and willing to weather the many temptations and passions that come our way in this world. You know, it, it speaks to this strongly. And this ultimately stems from the virtue of temperance. And of course, we acquire temperance through things like fasting, uh, through prayer, through vigil. These acts of self-discipline help us to have that temperance and that self-control, which in turn helps us to foster patience. Um, St. Gregory the Great, the Pope of Rome, St. Gregory the Diologist, as we call him, said that the virtue of patience, they exemplify, meaning the saints that he was talking about in, in book one of his dialogues, is to my mind greater than the power of working miracles. Because these virtues are for the building up of the glory of the kingdom of heaven. It is these virtues that we exercise that people will know that we belong to Christ, that we belong to his sheepfold. It is by exercising these virtues that the greatest miracle of all happens. Others are stilled and settled and come seeking the peace that we have. And of course, our peace comes from the Prince of Peace. It comes from Christ. So what do we take from this? We take that we have to constantly remind ourselves that these are things we should be meditating on, that we should be reflecting on these virtues. How do we apply what we read in the gospel? Sometimes it helps to turn it over and see another facet of the same principle. And so the principle of being sturdy, of having this peace, of being a rock in the midst of a raging sea is exactly what we Orthodox Christians are called to do in the world. You know, when, you, when you're at work, this is the ultimate how to be Orthodox and survive at work talk, in my opinion. It's to be patient. It's to constantly call to remembrance the patience of Christ when he was tried, the patience of the saints. Um, there was a, a Saint Libertinus in this book, one of St. Gregory's dialogues that he was recounting the life of because his deacon, Peter, didn't believe that there were any wonder-working Italian fathers. And, and how many of us have probably talked like this about uh, our own lands? But if you read the book Glorified in America, published by, uh, by Jordanville recently, you see that actually we do have wonder-workers and saints here, Elder Ephraim being one of the most recent ones. And 
this Saint Libertinus had performed miracles just through sheer humility, not even necessarily wanting to, but because devout mothers carrying their children, <laughs> desiring their resurrection, trusting in God's providence, seeing a priest, a man of God, and stopping him on the road, and he took a relic from his, uh, from his spiritual father and placed it on the child and prayed. And because he was patient and endured this woman's desire to stop him on his way, God worked a miracle through him, and also due to his humility in his master, and of course due to the faith of the woman supplicating for the prayers. You know, but ultimately, patience is greater than working miracles. Um, Saint Libertinus had an abbot who was rather abusive after his spiritual father had died. And this abbot actually beat him over you know, just getting certain chores done. And he never spoke against him. He never rebelled against him. He went to bed all beaten up and slept and then came to his abbot the next day and prostrated before him and said that he asked for permission to go and fulfill the obedience. And because of his humility, his patience, his gentleness, his abbot in turn was transformed and became the most gentle and patient abbot they had had. So let us look at this, that this patience itself can be greater than a miracle because of the change that it can not only bring forth in us, but bring forth in others, in our brothers and sisters in Christ, or those who are seeking peace. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Be sure to go to vigil and enjoy liturgy, and I'll catch you in the next one.